You are listening to Two Aliens and Eleven Roswell Books, hosted on Spreaker.com, an original Roswell podcast about the relevance and importance of the companion books to the TV series Roswell. Hey everyone, we're back, back again, call a friend. Chrissy and Jess are back with Two Aliens and Eleven Roswell Books podcast. We are happy to be back with you after a very long hiatus. Jess, how are you feeling? I'm great, actually. Thank you for asking. How are you? I am good. Glad to be back. I know there is a lot of fans out there who have missed us. We've missed you. So we're going to give a little explanation of why we were gone so long. Oh, yes. Hopefully you guys understand. Yes. First of all, we want to apologize. I know it's been a while. A couple reasons for us being gone. First of all, I experienced some uh, bullying for the first time in my life from fans. This is my first ever real fandom that I've been in. And I fell in love with this. And I got, I got some real hate. And I, I didn't know how to deal with it, and I was done. I really wanted to not do this podcast anymore. And it took a lot of convincing from Christy here and some other fans to be, no, 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 we, we miss you. We want you to come back. That was part of it. So I, I didn't want to do it for a while. And then on top of that, I got sick. I got a tumor in my intestines, and I had to do some major surgery. And I was down for a while. So I'm, I'm 100% better now, thank you thank god and i'm we're back so i'm excited to get back into it so thank you for all the love from the people who did reach out to me for various reasons so i really appreciate that so we're back and i'm healthy and i'm happy and i'm ready so thank you for that i'm glad you're back and i know it took some time for me uh as well i also experienced a lot of negativity unfortunately through the roswell fandom And it caused me to not even watch Roswell for at least six months. I almost thought about taking down my Roswell Virtual Party Instagram page. That almost happened. And Jess also was part of the reason it kind of convinced me to stick around with that. Uh, And I know a lot of other people I was close to would have missed me. So it was uh, was difficult to say the least. Um, I finally got into a place now over a year later where I can say... I am back to enjoying Roswell again and getting back into these books I know is going to be really special. So let's get into that because we want to get back to the positive things that make us smile about this fandom and the things we love. And we love this. This is our thing, right? One of our favorite things, Jess and I are always talking to fans on social media about how much we love the books and that there's actually four books that follow the end of the season three series finale that people still don't know and they still don't know these books exist. And by the way, we do have all of the PDFs now to all 11 books. So if you would like them, please message us and let us know on social media or through email, uh, roswellvirtualparty at gmail.com and we can get those links to you. There's a link on Google Drive for the PDFs. We don't make any money off of this. We're giving this free of charge to the fans. We want the fans to experience these books just like we did. And a shout out to our friend Deb, who actually typed out three of the missing books that we didn't have. Yes. Thank you, Deb. Yes. Thank you, Deb. We love you. Yes, we love you. So we are getting into the book No Good Deed, which is the second book that we believe was released right well actually no this is actually not the second one was released um little green men was actually the one that's released i have a different layout and you're probably thinking well why did you put this one second and let me explain that a little bit so i do my layout a little bit different i have a formula for the way i read and watch roswell i like to do it based on the story That way, when you're reading and you're watching, 
it all makes sense. This book follows the storyline greatly. I will give the author credit for this one. They paid attention. They went with the storyline for season two, which is great because some of them didn't. And that's why I put it where it went. And they paid attention to so many details in season two. So that's why I put it where it went. So that's why I say read where it goes because I want you to watch all of season two and stop right before Alex dies because Alex is still alive in this book so obviously we need him <laughs> so what so watch until right before what's the name of that episode where he dies cry your name cry your name that's right I should know that right before that watch till that episode and then read this book because they're going to reference every single episode in this in this book so that you then you'll it'll make sense it all flows so that's why i put it there so then you'll be able to reference all of that in this book so that's why i put that there if that makes sense and you did mention there's an episode that we recommend that you watch right before you read this book which is the season two christmas episode uh episode 10 in season two called a roswell christmas carol we recommend you watch that because one of the characters we meet is someone who got affected by the miracle that max did on the children in the cancer wing in that episode correct this story takes place, it's a continuation of the, what happens with the miracle. It's all about that. So I recommend that you watch that so that you can remember what happens in that. Because right hap it happens, and this, this book has dates, and it takes place right then. So this is about what happens to one of the little girls that was missed from Max's miracle. So Jess is going to summarize the main story of the book without giving away the ending for anybody that maybe A, doesn't want to read a book, is not into actually reading a book or audiobooks, or B, just kind of wants a synopsis to refresh your memory if you maybe have read it and it's been a while. So we're just going to give you the Cliff Notes version of that. So Jess, take it away. So this story is about a little girl who's sick. Her father is desperate and he witnessed the healing of the kids on Christmas Eve by Max. And he wants to know why his little girl didn't get healed. And he doesn't think it's fair. And he wants to know who did it. So he's on a search to figure out who that was. And he saw the two people who did it but he's in a search to find out who and he traces them back to Roswell New Mexico and he finds the kid and he whacks one of them over the head Michael and he takes him back to his house and says I want you to hear my kid not knowing that he's got the wrong one and he also thinks that these kids are responsible for a scam because at the, at the same time there's two people who are doing a scam for other ki sick kids selling serum saying if you pay us ten thousand dollars we'll send you the serum that healed these sick kids of the miracle and we'll we'll do the same thing for your kids so all these sick kids grieving parents are sending these scam artists money so they're making profit off of Max's miracle. Well, Michael finds out about that and wants to try to stop it. So at the same time that's going on, there's a reporter named Leela uh, around Roswell trying to figure out who's doing that. And she traces it back too because she has the videotape from the hospital of Max and Michael. And she just so happens to end up in the crash down. And who walks in? Max. And she can figure, she's smart. She's one investigative reporter. 
and she figures it out oh that's the same kid well guy that was in that hospital room saving kids so she comes up with a plan and says I think that's the kid and I think he is part of the scam artist so so basically she is saying she says well I think that I'm gonna try to to write a story on this kid I'm gonna turn him into the police so we've got two people trying to go to the scam artist thinking it's Max and so they're trying so we've got two stories at the same time trying to go after scam artist and at the same time Max wants to stop the scam artist because you know his miracle got these kids these other kids he, he couldn't save which he feels terrible about in trouble in a way because their families are being scammed so we got all this craziness going on at the same time so Michael's missing and everybody's worried about him and they're trying to come stop scan artists and it's just this craziness all at the same time so uh, they are all trying to find the same people and of course you know they all end up going to the same part they find figure out who these people are and they end all up their house but of course I don't want to give you the ending <laughs> but I, what I will tell you is of course Tess is there but Tess you know she uses her powers which is a big foreshadowing this whole thing for all the stories I will tell you that Tess is very important and I promised you I would tell you how important Tess is Tess is a very 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 important because her powers are the most important thing to the whole story of Roswell I will just tell you that I don't want to give out anything away for the whole fandom but I do not like her and the only reason I don't like her is because she went after Max it's the only reason she could have had Kyle she could have had anybody else but she went after my Max okay I'm sorry you can touch whatever you want but you leave my Max alone you leave him alone my dreamers mm-mm okay mm -mm. you can lamp him on what you want but you do not go after my Max just saying but anyway back to the story she's very important very important to the story and so are the dupes which we will talk about at a later date so I'm just I'm just gonna emphasize that in the next few books and in this book whenever you read make sure you pay attention make sure you pay attention to her because as much as we hate her her powers are very important very important Jess, what were your favorite parts of this book? Well, I did say that the writers did really good. I, they, they mentioned the skins. They mentioned the, um, the crystals. They mentioned pretty much every single thing you'd think of in Season 2 and Season 1. They even talked about Kapolsky. They talked about how, you know, they talked about... Uh, they talked about Sean and how how Max could see how how much like the tickle fest she had with Sean and how it bothered him. But the one thing that bothered me the most, and I know this is a small minor detail, okay. When Michael got kidnapped, he took his keys and they went to his apartment and they broke in using a credit card. Which, does that really work? Can you really slide a care card in? Does that work? But anyway, that's not the point. He took his keys, and they said, but his car is still in the parking lot. Now, in all three seasons of Roswell, y'all know that man never had a car. He never had a car. We all know from the very first time he met Maria, what did he do? He stole her flipping car, right? Right? That's how they started, right? And then what did he had? He had a motorcycle. He never had a car. So they did all that research, and they were fans of the show, but they couldn't tell. They could not write that he had a motorcycle. He had, they had to put he had a car. That drove me nuts. 
Oh my gosh. That's the only thing. That's the only thing that I could find. Now I know that's a little as tiny detail, but for me that drove me nuts. That was the only thing. But even so, like he got kidnapped walking. How far was his apartment to the crash down? Does anybody remember that? Why was he walking? He got knocked on the head. That he would leave his car. If he had one. Nobody walk at night. They were supposed to be meeting their, each other for, for a date or whatever at 8 o'clock at night. Come on now. That drove me nuts. That was it. That was the only thing though. Everything else. That drove me nuts. But I'm, I'm just picky about st stupid little things like that, though. Just because I'm a fan and I like... I, I, I'm obsessed with this show, so like I pick out ridiculous stuff. It, it is not as bad as quarantine. When we get to quarantine, I have a list. It's bad. I get angry. So if you want to you want to hear me yell, well I won't yell. But if you want to hear me rant, oh that'll be the episode cuz I will rant. Cuz it's bad. So bad. But see, originally I think I had I think I had this one on my uh my problem child list. But I have uh, removed it because it's no longer on there cuz I I now know that it, it's not a problem child because it literally has every episode of season two on it. Like it mentions every, almost every single thing. Because if you watch season two, like in the Sean, and if you pay attention, it really could, you could just, it could fall, and it has dates. It talked, and it was talking about Brody, and Brody's getting his equipment. His special equipment. Well, think about that. Think about that. His special equipment that comes in May. Okay, May. What happens if special equipment comes? Well, isn't that when he goes a little berserk? And they end up going to New York? And that's when... That's when the tapping happens. And that's when, oh, our little lovely test... Uh, kills our Alex? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, like, that's when everything starts to hit the fan. So, this is when we start setting. So, they're setting. They're literally setting everything up for when crap hits the fan. So, I, I give them props. So, this literally is setting things up. Not only that, a lot of people have wondered. Well, I wonder what had happened to those kids that got healed. I mean, really don't know like the repercussions of those kids getting healed because you know later on we know that that Liz gets powers do those kids ever get powers no they get healed right we really don't know that they're young you know we don't know that but we do learn the repercussions of what too much of a good thing happens here's the thing like Max can't use his powers all the time because people like that take advantage of him. Obviously. Bad people are going to take advantage of him doing good things. All he did, he couldn't he couldn't let these kids die. All he wanted to do was save one little girl. One little girl. And he looked around and saw these dying children that night. He's like, "I can't do this. I can't leave them dying." And it about killed him because he was, he lost his powers for what, four days, it said. And he was willing to go. He had, the, he kept the list. The, he took the hard drive with him of all those kids that they tried to scam. And he was going to go save them too. And Liz said, no, Max, you can't do that. And he said, I have to. And the thing that I love about Max Evans, and I will love forever, is that his heart is so big that 
he doesn't care if he gets caught because he wants to save everybody. He wants to help when he can. That's what I love about this show. He did it the day he saved Liz. He did it the day he saved those kids. And he'll do it until the day he dies. And that's what I miss. And that's why I wanted to continue on. And that is why nobody will ever be better Max than Jason. Because nobody, you see it in his eyes when he plays Max. You just can see it. There, it's just, it's just there. Right? You just can't, that is the best, it is the best. That is the best thing about it. And you can see it in that, you can see it in this book. You can see that book. And I love that too. I love the part where Michael says that he was pissed at Max because he, he wished he had that power. He wished he could save all the kids he couldn't. He wished that he could help too. And Michael realized too that he wanted that. He wanted to be able to help. And I don't want to give away the ending. But Michael helped too. He helped to be able to to to, to save save a little girl without using his power. I think the most favorite part of the book for both of us was Michael and Max working together to save these kids, right? That was it. Like, just how much, how much, like, they wanted to save these kids. Like, they wanted to help so much. It didn't matter how much they were, were going to get caught. They just, they were just like, I, we have to save them. We have to stop this. They didn't care. They were going to put a stop to this. They were like, and Tess was just like, we can't do this. No, no, we're going to get in trouble. Max was like, I don't care. I don't care. We have to stop this. They're going to hurt more kids. They're going to hurt these children. We have to. He said, when I saved them, I could see their lives from their birth to when they got their whole life, which is not very long. Just like I did when I saved Liz. And I, I feel everything. I can't. I have to stop this. I just, oh, you just feel all that. You can see it. You can feel it. I like it. And this book too, you jump from character to character. So it's almost like, the sh it's like watching the TV show too. They did very well with that too. They gave us dates as well. Right. Which is nice. It's good to put that in right. there so we know where to put it in the timeline of our show. Which is nice for me when I'm trying to figure out where the heck this goes. So we have dates and we know where this is. We're like, okay, so we're in March. So we know we're, here we are in December when all this happened. Now we're jumping into March. Now we're jumping to May. So we're right here. So we know where things are happening. So we know, like, you know. And then there were, you know, and, and like, when, when the reporter was like, I want to talk to Brody. I mean, she, he talked about Sydney, they didn't act like Sydney didn't exist. When they, like you know how books, like in the show, they don't talk about what happens in the books. Like, and if books don't talk about what's in the happening show, and it drives me insane. Like they didn't they're like they're two different worlds, which they they still don't do that. They they still don't talk about like when Liz got shot and we talked we like we talked about loose ends, like the whole Joel Morton thing. Nobody talks about that. Like when they went to the caves, like that didn't exist in the whole universe of the show. I still consider it canon. It just happened off screen. Right. That's what I kind of, I kind of consider the books like episodes that we don't get to see. Because some of this stuff, like, could you imagine them at one point? When they go can to find these bad guys, there's a shootout. Now, could you imagine that on WB? Uh-uh. Not at the time. There ain't no way there's going to be people shooting like that. And there would it would just be... There's too much bad guys and drug stuff and... It would just too, be too much. There's some things that I just could see that would be just too much red tape that they would have to get around. You know what I mean? 
So it's easier to write about it. More detail. And there's like having to drive teenagers across state lines and having to do this and that. That'd be a lot of a lot more filming that they would have to do and a lot it's a lot easier to write about it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Maybe that's also why they wrote these books is because they knew they had these stories in their head and it would be better in book form financially at least. And I don't know in, when season two happened, I also don't know if they knew where the story was going either because Tess's character got written out. So in the book right there, she was a lot more friendly than I like. <laughs> She was friendly with Max, but she was coming off like she didn't want him, but she was trying to be flirty with with Kyle, and you were kind of like, huh? It was it was very interesting. So it was, they were kind of like teetering that line, but kind of setting it up, you know? So it was almost like they weren't sure where it was going to go yet. Because the books, that was before. They were setting it up before, you know? But they did talk about Alex got back from his trip, but we all know he didn't go on that trip. So at the same time, I could be very wrong, and they knew exactly what they were doing and where she went. I, I liked it. I thought it was a very good book. I liked that they continued the story for us, that we got to see more of it. And, you know, this poor girl was in a lot of pain, and she got missed, and... And poor Matt, they felt horrible. And then poor Michael felt horrible because he couldn't heal her. And it was a good, it was a good story. I think it is great for those who wondered about what happened to those kids in the Christmas episode. If they ever had any questions about the aftermath of what Max did, it's a little, it continues that in this book. That's another reason why I think that after they ran from the special unit and everything settled down, I really think that Max should have been a doctor because then he could heal and use it sparingly enough to not hurt himself but do miracles. And then Liz could work in the lab because she was going to do science and she'd be right there. That's my movie. Movie. I'm telling you, Jason and Sherry, get the rights and do the movie. We still want that Roswell movie. We're still falling for it. Yeah, and I want I want Jason and Sherry to get the rights and do it together because they both want to direct and then they could star in it. I'll help you. I'm kidding. I just have some ideas. Jessica can be a consultant on the film. I just want to be She's available. Just make sure you read the books first because it has to happen after the books. After the books. Emphasis on after. The books that people are still finding out exist. I'm sure Jason Kadams will be like, yeah, I mean, you're not taking anything away from them. Just continue their story that they started. I'm telling you, Tess wouldn't be coming back, but somebody else would. I'm going to say who. Yet. I do think it's noteworthy to mention that line. The line you posted earlier about Michael is on page 85 in the book. It's about the middle of the page. Yep. Uh, flash, kind of like a flashback that Michael's having. Michael, Max had said, I couldn't stop myself. No, 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 Michael had said, not quite looking Max in the face. I'm pissed that I don't have the ability to help the kids in the hospital that you couldn't get to. That's my favorite part. And he says the exact same thing in the show. When he goes to his house. Right after he healed them. Because he thought he was mad at him. For doing it. For going. And not stopping. Not stopping healing. To get out of there faster. He's like I couldn't stop. I couldn't stop. He's like no. He says that quote. So if you go and you watch the episode. He'll say it. That's the same quote. I love that quote. I would say that's probably my favorite part of the book is because we learn something more about Michael and maybe why he gets so mad at Max a lot is because he really does wish that he had that healing power. And of course, there's that one instance in the River Dog episode where he does heal River Dog and it's like that one and only instance where he ever 
heals anybody. Right, which I think was like, that was a continuity error. <laughs> I think he wasn't supposed to do that. I think that was a mistake, and they were like, whoops. Except for when that episode where he steals Max's power, where, like when Who Died and Made You King episode, where he was like, whoops. And he's like, ha, 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 I can do whatever I want now. But Michael gets to the point where he just is like, I do whatever I want because he just gets so angry because he also says in this book like I wish that I had the same kind of family that Max had that I had the same kind of because he didn't get the love and support that Max got he got screwed like he got abused he got he didn't get the he he was always he's always been in the back you know he's always been he's the commander he's not the king so, like, even when he went, when they went to go confront the bad guys, Max is like, don't kill them. Max, but Michael went in there, he's pissed, and he went in there full force, and he was, like, blasting them. Max was there, and he was, like, putting a shield up so they wouldn't shoot him, and Michael's, like, shooting at him. And Max is like, you need to calm down. This is not what we're doing. Like, Michael is always, like, Full force, full force. He doesn't think. He doesn't think. Right. Michael is the one with anger issues. Yes. Max is so calm, cool, and collectively. So he's usually not the one that's angry. Like, the, remember the last book, Max was angry, and we were like, what the heck is this? So the last book, the author was making Max angry and wanting to go after the guy, and that was weird for us because Max is never angry. Max is always still cool, calm, collective. Well, I think the reasoning there was because it was Liz's shooter and that was near and personal to him because that person had almost killed his soulmate. I think part of it, too, was he was just so... Right, I get that. I see what you're saying. But normally, it's still not him. Right. That's usually not in Max's nature to be angry. So that about wraps it up for No Good Deeds. Our podcast on the second book in the Roswell Companion book series. Next, we will be going over Little Green Men. As always, we have a little saying around here. Read the blippin' Blippin books. Wait, that's not right. Is that right? What is it? Wasn't it read the blippin' books? I don't remember. Uh, uh, I'm not a, read I'm the not a, freaking books or read the freaking books or the flipping books I think it's reading the flipping books but I can't remember is it freaking or flipping I think it's freaking I don't know I'm gonna have to play for us because I can't even remember how we ended our own podcast go all the way to the end Bleepin'! Not even need a word! Bleepin'! What the hell? <laughs> this is gonna be our funny! What the hell? That's not even a word. Okay! Take two on our outro. Let's try this again, shall we, guys? Read the, the bleepin'. bleepin books. All opinions stated in this podcast are fan opinions only. We do not own the rights to the books. They were published through Shyman Schuster. Fox owns the rights to the books. We do not personally know anyone who helped produce the TV show Roswell or the authors who wrote the Roswell books.